Hey, good morning, everybody. Today is Wednesday, 8.09 a.m. Eastern Time, February 21. Let's, you know, review what, you know, I wrote in the market wrapping and the current, you know, scenario. So, the volatility is still yesterday. Uh, it's, still sh it's still bearish, it's like a bearish smear, with a possibility to see a pullback, you know, tomorrow and Friday, right? Uh, I want to show, I, re uh, uh, I review right now, uh, I review after, you know, how it is right now. But that's what we saw that sprinted the asset at the close, right? So, basically, per such, you know, graphic, you know, so what the dealers have been doing? They have been selling 4,980, 4,975, and they have been buying, you know, out of the money puts because the implied volatility for out of the money puts is, is really high, so means much more premium. So, this is, you know, the difference that I showed you guys before the smile and the smirk. This is like the bearish smirk, and the opposite smirk supposed to be higher in the call out of the money calls, a drop to uh, out of the money puts, you know, and keep it going down. So this is bearish, not bullish, okay? Uh, that's, you know, I just uh, summarized what I wrote over here. Regarding the deltas, what, you know, uh, printed yesterday. For 1,970, you know, a bullish delta flow for today. That's what's left in the book yesterday. But remember, you know, that region, of course, is a little bit like five points, uh, Below, right? Because you know, per the SMIC 7580, right? Seven, 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 uh, five points like below. So it looks like you know the dealers sold those calls, right? Look like that dealers do, 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 uh, sold those calls uh, and you know bought out of the money puts because you know the pattern of the current situation because you are in a negative gamma territory and consequently according to the implied volatility curve, okay? This Q. But anyway, so here, supposed to be match of, with over here, right? That's exactly almost the same. 75.80, it's almost like no flow, breaking 80, squeeze supposed to be started, 95, uh, supposed to be reject, and supposed to be the inflection point for the upside. Right, so if you see the delta flow really match with the volatility skew, okay, really match with the volatility skew. Yesterday, yesterday, you know, uh, we saw like 4,906 as an inflection point for the downsize, and maybe 4,950 supposed to be the maximum downsize target. I told you guys over here, like I'm just summarizing the delta flow. Regarding the gamma design, it looks like they put the jacks at 4,940. They dropped 10 points before at 4,950, right? So the minus jacks intraday, 4,940. So, but per delta, suppo uh, supposed to be like 4,950, 55. That we know what we saw in the book, yes, it's because you know everybody is holding 4,940, whereas the minus jacks. Is located. It's usually also they also sell, you know, uh, puts to finance the uh, to finance uh, the hedge, you know, and keep markets locked to collect the premium. Remember, the machines know how to do it better than us. Okay, the economic agenda today for me is start at 8, 8 a.m. We feel like uh, ball stick is speaking after hedge book, 20, year, uh, 20 years bond action, and more feds at two, uh, um, one more fed at one, and the funk minutes at 2 p.m. Observe that the DX also dropped 1% and the, G, the DIX dropped 1%, now 44.3%. Is in a transition to be bullish, to be bearish. Below 44% is really bearish, is because dealers start to unwind their long position, right? So this is in a transition. But so far, since last year, we are not seeing DIX print below 44%, okay? But we are in a transition. And also, the DX dropped $6 million. So they start to accelerate market. Means we could see a squeeze, you could see big candles move market, less money is needed. You know, how bigger is the DX is how difficult, you know, 
for dealers to move market. For example, if you see GX a six six billion, ten billion, so to move one percent market, you be need like six billion, ten billion. So now to move one percent market, you need only three million, three billion dollars. So I soon became negative. You know, you guys, you, you see volatility spiking, big, you know, candles. Yeah, that's where we make money. You know, we we found the bottom and tops. So just, you know, here just to summarize what I said about this. And, you know, the option books is also saying the same. Probability like key supports 4,940. Uh, we have divergence at 4,907. So a weakness started at 4,906. What does this mean? Weakness starts 4,906 per book. What does this mean? In negative gamma territory, sell weakness by rallies. So 4,960 is a key level. If you you know break down 4,960, we suppose we see at least 10 points drop going back test the old minus GX region that was located at 4,950. Worst case scenario 4,940. If you break this down, market could be getting ugly because that's the pattern. I also told you you guys over here, you know, according you know the, the new pattern. Uh, negative, you know, gamma uh, territory is much more attractive to sell call spreads at every melt up than call put spreads. Why? Because the gamma pattern sell weakness, you know, by rallies. So when you see nearby the GX, you know, we, we is a lot of risk to sell a put spread because tend to the out of the money put imply volatility going skyrocket you know and consequently you know bring a lot of premium to the puts okay so it's much better to see uh, if we go into a certain level that uh especially nowadays 47 and 80 you know the imply volatility is going down in the call contracts where they have been selling calls to buy out of the money put so to sell those calls of course if you see the flip don't do it you know because the pattern of the gamma is supposed to be different you know buy weakness and sell strength and then you we could you see like a squeeze the transition between gamma now from negative to positive that's when you saw squeezes okay but so far since the pattern you know is sell Weakness for me is much more attractive to sell call spreads than put spreads. So, so let's review what over here, what we saw a possibility of a pullback tomorrow and Friday because you know you see the implied volatility is jumping in, uh, at 75 and 85 calls, right? But we have divergence over here in out of the money uh, calls and puts, okay? But these, you know. Uh, angle, you know, uh, make an uh, 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 interpretation that we could see uh, a bounce. But the bounce, because the curve, you know, the, the, the curve, the, the still is bearish is milk, you know, even you see a jump over here because 4,980 suggestions where, you know, the squeeze is supposed to be start between 75 and 80. But according to the deltas, we could see uh, we could see a rejected 95, right? So tend to tend to see a bounce, but the bounce will not be buyable, it will be sellable. I don't know if it exists this uh, expression, but you know, supposed to be sold, supposed to be sell, they supposed to be sell a bounce. But let's review how we have or what we have right now, uh, the difference. Okay, let's close the market wrap, market structure, and let me open, give me one second, my computer is a little bit slow when I start to do presentation.
Anyway, uh, I'm waiting for my finger shrimp. But anyway, let's just let's review the, 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 the delta flow. Of course, the, the pre-market is basically a no-flow. The overall delta flow is negative, so flow is still uh, bearish. The current gamma design is slightly different, you know, than we saw yesterday uh, at the close. Pay attention now that we have, you know, positive gamma at 4,970, okay? We have positive gamma at 4,970 and negative gamma is starting below 4,965. So if you break up 4,907, the pattern is supposed to be different, you know? What is the pattern in a positive gamma territory? Buy weakness, sell rallies. What you know the gamma and the delta is showing right now is a possibility transition. Is a possibility, you know, transition to a positive gamma. Anyway, now my think swim is getting back. But uh, look, you know, how what do we have in the volatility skill curve? We still have a, sm a smirk, but we don't have more, you know, uh, the curve, you know, this, this inclination, this angle is not more bullish for tomorrow and Friday. So now the implied volatility skill is not showing us a bounce, okay? It's not showing us a bounce. Or uh, the, the CN over here is expiration tomorrow, and the purple is today, and the red over here is Friday. So pay attention that, you know, the big difference than we had now, comparing with yesterday right so market the volatility skill curve is not showing us more a bounce you know it's really bearish remember 4980 is where the squid is supposed to be started according you know the volatility skill curve also that matches with the delta flow okay also matches with the delta flow. So what's going on right now? Per, you know, the curve. They have been selling for 1,975 calls, for sure, to buy out of the money puts. 4,945, 4,950, and, you know, 4,065, 4,000. Those, those puts that have been paying much more premium is 4,970 up to 4,960. Right, because the implied volatility is really high over here. Okay, it's really high over here. So consequently, they have been selling on 75 and 80 calls to buy 4,970.65 puts. You know, that's you know that uh, the volatility skill is showing us. So why this quiz is supposed to be start as soon as we break 75 and 80? Because per the volatility skill curve, that's where they have been selling calls. Consequently, if the dealers, the computer of the dealers start to see premium in the call side, you know, they will start, you know, to bring market above 75. And what is going on uh, uh, as soon as you break those levels? Those that have been playing negative delta, they need to neutralize the delta. They need to buy back, you know, what they sold and buy delta one to neutralize their portfolio. Consequently, generate a gamma squeeze. Okay? So, 75 and 80 are the points that we supposed to be see start a gamma squeeze. But current delta show us that we could go back up to 95. And also, the curve over here is not showing that the bounce will be viable. It's also, the curve is showing that the they will sell at the bounce. So, 95 could, could supposed to be the, uh, the, uh, the top of the squeeze. The squeeze. Also per delta, okay. So let's go back to what we have in the book. So overall delta is negative. Now we have delta positive delta flow between 4,965. I mean, start at 4,965 before we have negative 65 and positive in 70. According according to the volatility skill, so. Dealers tend to be selling calls at those strike to buy out of the money puts. Now, the worst case scenario 
It's still 4,940. 4,940, yesterday was the minus GX. Now the minus GX intraday, let's see, is 4,950. They bring it back to 4,950. So, breaking down 50, now 4,950, 40, 10 to print. Slightly difference. Because, you know, they move the minus GX for 4,950. Before yesterday was 4,940. So now the minus GX, we could consider it a support. So we need to look and pay attention, especially at 4,950. So we have digits, divergence at 4,950 as well, because let me see if the deltas or 50, no, the delta is still negative. But, you know, it's like minus 45, minus 45,000. So it's basically it's like no flow at 4,950. So, but that's the region that we need to pay attention. Breaking down 4,950, we will back test 4,940. That was the yesterday minus GEX. Okay, that's what we have in the book right now. Let me close the spreadsheet and let me talk about like the Bitcoin Amara. That's the assets that uh, I track more. So yesterday I decided to close my beach. I, I closed at $29.50, I told you guys. And I also decided to close my at $25. Okay? So I'm holding cash and I'm waiting to see if the flow uh, switch. Because how will we try to identify, you know, how the flow is switch? We monitor the order as well, right? We monitor the orders as well. I have been posted to you guys the Delta One orders uh, in the closed group a lot. And I have been highlighted. So since the pattern change, looks like that you see a drop after a Delta One order print. Why? Because tend to be a close long gamma, not a short, because deal is a long gamma, remember? So the before, what was the pattern? As soon as you saw a drop, a delta one printed, and then you see a squeeze to, to, to up, to, to they, they, they melt up, right? That was the pattern in a positive gamma. Now the pattern in a negative gamma, as soon as you saw a delta one order, you know, tend to be a close. And usually you see a delta one order as soon as you start to see the flip. When you saw the Delta One order yesterday, exactly when market trades above 75, right? And I also highlight in the closed group, looks like they start to close uh, long gamma. So we need to look for 73 and 78. I put this in the, the closed group. And what's happening? You see a jump at 78 and then a dump to 60, 60 something, right? Remember? And also, why you, you saw a spike at the close? It's, the spike at the close is not built through gamma. It's built through, through future. Why? When dealers are long gamma, they had themselves through future. They sell future to buy long gamma. So, consequently, when they start to close their long gamma, they also start to close part of the hedge because they are short. And consequently, you guys see those spikes, right? But right away, you know, start to go down. So they buy to close their hedge also. Okay? Hope you guys understand. So the spike at the close and the, and the MOC was 1 billion sell is uh, the systemic, you know, the structure now, the spike at the close is by future because they close their hedge. They long gamma, but they are short future. They never play unprotected. Dealers never play unprotected. Consequently, as soon as you see a negative delta, sorry, a positive delta, delta one, uh, printing, the, and then you see a down, a down is because they close their long gamma, but in some point they you buy future to close the same amount of hedge. Consequently, you see those crazy spikes. Okay, this is not a gamma squeeze. 
This is a close out of the hedge. Okay? That's a close out of the hedge. They need to buy back. So let's you know, now talk about you know Bitcoin Amara. So as I post a uh, yesterday, let me put in the weekly graph. Let me put oh uh, before you know put in the uh, weekly graph and highlight what I said yesterday. Look look you know the MACD is starting is in a process to build a bearish and last right the ADX the DMI is not more wide open as was here. They starting to be really, really, really tight. You know, they, they, I mean, the mouth have been closed. The next, you know, step is to see like a bearish last like this. The red going up and the green going down. So, but you know, the most fast indicator is the MACD. The tricks is still bullish, but look, you know, the angle. They, they start to lose the angle and the assets is still overbought. So that's totally health, as I told you guys, and this is what I'm looking for, is a pullback, you know, up to 48 or 46,000. 46,000, 46 to 86, we have a pivot, and I expect to hold over here. Look at what we have at 46,286. We have the EMA 50 in the daily graph and a pivot, okay? So let's switch for the weekly graph. And let's check what we have in the region. Note that at 46,286, we have in the weekly graph the EMA 8. So it's totally, you know, it's totally uh, health and bullish to see a meltdown up to 46,286, 46,286. So we'll back test the EMA 8 in the daily graph. I mean, the weekly graph that correspond with the, the EMA 50 in the daily graph, right? We clean it up all the leverage people and the trend supposed to be keeping. I mean, the, 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 uh, the asset keep the trend because as you can see over here, oh, look over here. We lost, we, we lost the, the EMA 8 in the weekly graph. We back test this cup, you know, this curve. Of, okay, and then my and the assets went up, uh, build a pivot, and this pivot back test the EMA 8 and jump, you know, up to a resistance that was 40 at uh, 34 at uh, 35,000. And since then, we have been trading, you know, above the bullion band. So then, the last drop that we have over here on November 23, in the weekly of November, uh, uh, 20, November 23, 27, 27, November 23, also back test the EMA 8 and went back up. And especially in this week on January, January 22. So we came, we lost EMA 8, we back test the curve and ping, yeah, Bitcoin. Up again. So if you see a back test at 46 or up, you know, and hold at this curve, you know, that's totally bullish. We will, you know, calm down all the indicators, especially the RSI, and we also clean up the market. And then Bitcoin could be go back up. Of course, if you break down 46. You know the orders level, the major, uh, the major support will be 42,789. Uh, 42, this yellow line, okay. And if you break this down, you know I'm looking for maximum 40,000, 40,150. Observe that around 40,000 and 42,000 we have EMA 20 in the weekly graph is also, you know, a very important support. If you touch the EMA 20 and coming, uh, going back up and back inside of this curve, is also bullish and the trend is persist because you will not see, you know, angles moving at EMA 20. Of course, that EMA 8 and 3 that are fastest, the angle is supposed to be changing if you backtest EMA 20. But if you hold that EMA 20 and start to going up, that's really bullish. As I said, relax some indications, special uh, the RSI, and clean it up the market. You know, the asset will be ready to come back up. 
Regarding Mara, what I told you guys about, you know, all the supports and the possibility to build a, a cup and handle. So, the first support that I told you guys is 23.49. But I don't disregard to close the gap at 21.74 or, you know, back test 20.64. And the worst case scenario for me is to close the gap and back test 17.72. Okay? I will love to see. Mara get back to 1772 to close the gap. That's the main area that I'm looking to buy back, you know, Mara. But remember, now we have we have EMA 20 in the daily graph exactly at 2254. It's still above, it's straight at 2288. We have the support at 2064. We uh, the, the gap closed at 2167, and the next gap is at 1764. So those are the, the regions that you need to look for regarding Mara. Mara has the same pattern as Bitcoin. Of course, that's a company that 100% Bitcoin, right? So the ADX, the DMIs, oh, the mouth starts to be closed like Bitcoin. And the MACD is in the process to uh, building last. The RSI is different than Bitcoin, it's not overbought. But Mara, could you go back to be oversold? That's, you know, what I'm looking for, to buy back. But the important are the supports that I'm presenting to you guys. Okay? Uh, something that caught my attention right now. Where's my mouse? Something that caught my attention right now uh, is the is, is so far is the DXY. The DXY is still being rejected in the inflection point, but buyers, you know, have been jumping in. Sorry guys, I have some problems with my computer. So buyers have been jumping in exactly uh, at EMA 50. No, between EMA 50, I mean, between EMA, EMA, EMA 50 and EMA 20, okay? So buyers have been jumping in, in that uh, indicators. So here at, at the drop, they bought at EMA uh, 200, this uh, red line, and now they are buying at EMA 20. So also, could you be a preparation to break this up? Could you be? We need, you know, to pay attention at 104.699. Guys, take care. Enjoy the day. Uh, I'm finished by here. So I have like some problems with my, my computer in my dock station. But I give you guys all the overview about... Anyway, I give you guys an audio review about today.